Hi everybody, Elisa here with Vera, uh, with Rosie, <laughs> and another Vera Bradley bag of the day. Uh, today I uh, thought I would show um, if my light cooperates. It's it's not such a great lighting here, um, but I did want to show uh, my. Um, my Halloween custom Vera tote, which finally came just the other day, and um, you know, I, I'm sure people are aware uh, that Vera is having some challenges with their order fulfillment and their custom division right now. It, I think because they've just gotten swamped with orders. And they just, there are other contributing factors, how they were handling order fulfillment that caused problems. So I'm just, and, and people, I had heard people, some of people's spooky cats orders were canceled. Um, and so I'm very grateful to have received this and that my orders weren't canceled. Because, um, you know, people have been clamoring for these Halloween uh cats and dogs patterns for, you know, over a year. <laughs> so people are probably aware of the backstory that they um, offered. Uh, they offered a few bags in the spooky cats and what they were calling spooky dogs, which they're now calling Halloween. They offered them a sort of one-off giveaway um, items and everybody was begging them to release them uh, you know to the general public <laughs> and it took a long time and then they finally did you know in this sort of strange way where they just put them in the custom section and then shortly after doing that they removed them the two patterns as a exterior patterns at any rate um, not the coordinating linings those are still available in the small Vera tote option, they pulled this, which Halloween and Spooky Cats, and then they very quickly released an online exclusive, a web exclusive of the small Vera tote and Spooky Cats, along with a coordinating throw, and that sold out immediately. I do have a video about this, so I can put links. Um, and so people were thinking, well, they're probably going to do the same thing with Halloween because they pulled that pattern from the small Vera tote custom option as well. And then it never happened. Um, and I'm wondering if that maybe has something to do with it being October and that's Breast Cancer Awareness Month and they had their breast cancer pattern that maybe they sort of needed to focus on. And it's just sort of this, you know, <laughs> this sort of worlds colliding kind of thing. So I don't know. I mean, maybe they never planned to do anything with Halloween, but it does seem odd that they pulled it as a custom option for the small beer tote and I still think it's gone um, from that particular option. You could get it in the regular size Vera and the other styles and custom uh, as an option still. Anyway, uh, you know, so, so pleased to have this. It is showing, it's, a, it's the color's pretty accurate here. Um, maybe just a little bit lighter than it looks in person. It's very difficult to photograph this and spooky cats in general. The light meter, if you, I mean, if you're, maybe if you have, you know, a real, a good SLR, you know, you could be photographing it more accurately. But, you know, I'm just using my laptop or my phone, and so I can't really control the exposure that much. And the light meter does want to lighten it up a little bit, and that's what's happening. But um, what you can see here, which is, which is why I wanted to show these together, is that the, the gray background tones are slightly different. Um, this one is slightly warmer than this one. This is cooler. Uh, so they have a similar value, so that me meaning like how dark or light they are. Um, so they are, they are both a sort of a medium, a mellow kind of medium gray. They're not quite as white and bright of a gray, but uh, the dog version is definitely slightly warmer. Very subtle. But I do mention that in case people were still thinking of ordering something and maybe coordinating, combining patterns on, on the exterior. Just might be something to be aware of. 
that once those two grays are next to each other, like if you wanted to do straps in one and the body or a pocket in one and the body and something else, when those two grays are next to each other, the difference might become more noticeable given the light, you know, it depends on the light. You know, it's not, maybe it's not as noticeable when you're holding bags like this, but when they're right up against each other, you might start to see it more. So I just wanted to mention that. And also it's interesting to see this is more colorful because of the Halloween costumes that the dogs are wearing. You know, this is, has more of a black, well, the pattern has more of a black feel to it, a darker feel to it, just visually, with just a, a handful of colors that are popping, you know, the orange and the green primarily. Um, but this you get more of a range. But what is similar in both of them is the way the background is treated with what I've been calling that sort of uh, scary movie mist. <laughs> so there's, there's this, you know, uh, variation in the background tone. And you can see it up here too. Yeah. So that's nice. It gives the background a little bit of interest. So the coordinating, I do have best in show the original here as well to show that because there was a again a background color difference. Of course, this is solid, no variation in the background tone. And also a little bit lighter. This is definitely a little bit more mellow. What I did like about this, the Best in Show tote, this is a, still a new fabric, as is this. This is new fabric. In the custom section right now, the bags are still new fabric, along with the fact that you get the piping and that uh, this, you know, edging, strip of fabric edging on that slip pocket on the front, which is a nice touch. Everything, all those little things make it more look more professional. Um, but this was still new fabric, and so before the move to recycled fabric, and they were still doing piping and that piece of fabric here on the on the edge of the slip pocket. But the piping is, you know, key. Really gives the bag structure, especially the top edge of a bag. Um, but here they had moved from doing uh, right before the switch to recycled fabric. They had released a few uh, patterns where the trim was also the pattern fabric rather than a solid microfiber color. And I really like this option um, because it, it has more of a vintage feel, it's sort of a throwback to how they used to handle their piping back in the day. If you see vintage pieces that have piping, um, it, it's you know, it's that it matches the fabric. It's not it's not a solid. Um, at least some of the time. I mean, I, I don't I don't know 100% of the time what they're doing, but so I really did like that. And I, there are a handful of bags that I have that that were treated this way, and then they did away with piping altogether because of the move to recycle fabric. And I guess you know trying to cut costs. And <laughs> I was so bummed because I had been you know so on board with this move away from microfiber. So I really did like that for this reason. And this has more of a, well it's less colorful let's just say. Right, it just uh, has more uh, more black in this and dark gray and then little bits of red and brown but this has more color because of the costumes. So that's nice. Fine. It's like yellow and orange and that kind of you know blue color there. And some pink, light pink. So um for this one I decided to do uh granite gray and then microfiber trim. Um I wanted to get a kind of a monochromatic, kind of a cohesive, soft tone on tone kind of look for this because um, I did remember after I agonized over it when I was making the choice saying should I do black but what if the black of the microfiber is too inky is too saturated and it doesn't really match the black tones in the pattern that was going to be a problem for me and that's exactly what happens and it happens with the spooky cats too both of these patterns in the custom version 
have a less saturated, a less inky kind of look to them, and they almost look a little faded, um, which is kind of nice in a way because, well, that's the details in the drawing really come through, but also kind of counteracts the sort of uh, novelty pattern. You know, it's a it's sort of a playful, funny, almost goofy kind of pattern. And so the sort of subdued treatment of it, um, printing of it, sort of tones it down a little bit, which is nice. So when you're carrying it, it's not such a crazy bag. <laughs> and so, you know, I did remember after I, I said, okay, I'm going to choose the, the gray. And, you know, I put the order in and then I'm agonizing over, oh, my God, I hope I didn't make a mistake. And then I remembered that I th that their trim on the giveaway items when they had released them just, you know, in the raffle items that, that that was gray and then I was looking at photos and confirming that you know I really liked the way it looked with the gray trim and so I started to relax because it's hard to tell from the website you know the website photos aren't always accurate for color in the custom section which is unfortunate because you know you're spending money you want to make choices that you're going to be happy with I mean like for example the the classic navy trim in the custom um, section of the website, I mean, on my screen, that looks like a, a dark, dirty gray. It never looks navy. Um, so, you know, it's kind of makes you nervous to choose something if you're not really sure what it's going to look like. Um, I do wish they'd go to ribbon zipper pulls in the custom that'd be my one thing I also I've also said I wish they would give you an option for a panel of side trim I think that would be great and they you know they could charge you for it um, that would be nice coordinating trim they haven't released a Vera tote with coordinating side trim in a, in a, in a while and so I'm hoping to see that maybe with a recycle tote see how they handle that but they haven't done that yet I don't know if they ever will that's a shame because that's a nice throwback to the, you know, harking back to the, sort of the history of the brand, the use of that trim. So I do think, you know, it seems to me it would be simple enough to just, because it's, it's just a slightly different pull mechanism here when you do the ribbon. It's a just a kind, a slightly different, you know, um, zipper pull piece of hardware here. You can see it sort of has two holes in it. It's got this hole that attaches to the zipper slide and then it has a, the hole down here that is another hole under this ribbon sort of where you see it on the other side um, but that's what the ribbon pull is threaded through worked through and so it's not quite the, as long as maybe a standard zipper pull that you would see on a sweatshirt or whatever jacket but it does have these two holes there one for each purpose um, Whereas this just has a D-ring. This piece of pleather is just attached to a D-ring. And I have on a, on a, a small item I was just going to chuck. Um, I, I did a little test and I cut this pleather off and I threaded a ribbon through and I created my own ribbon pull tie and I could do it. But because there's only this one opening in the D-ring, it didn't, it's not as nice. It doesn't lie as nice. It's, it's a little bit harder. It's more challenging to get the ribbon where the ribbon threads through to get it sort of looking nice, uh, lying nicely, looking neat. Um, it, it's a little bit more challenging. Because I had been thinking, well, I'll, I'll remove these and put ribbons in there. But now I'm not, I don't think I'm going to because it didn't, didn't, didn't look as, uh, or feel as great as I was hoping it would. So I think I would only do that in an emergency, like if this broke and I needed to come up with something else to function as a pull, then I might do it. And I'm also thinking of moving the um, label. I mean, it's right over a dog there. It's right over this, this guy. It's down there. <laughs> um, but we'll see. So, and um, in the regular Best in Show, 
the lining was that tennis ball lining I'm sure people are familiar with and it has little squirrels on it and they do offer a version of that in the custom to coordinate with this. I think the colors are slightly different but I decided that for the money you know I just wanted as many dogs as possible so, <laughs> so I just went with you know more of the exterior lining on the inside um, and I did custom em embroidery in there and that also sometimes affects my piping choice because um, I learned, I figured out, I hadn't realized this, the first time I used denim trim that the, and I did embroidery inside, and the embroidery came on a piece of denim. So that was the first time I realized, oh, okay. So you can't pick the fabric that your embroidery is done on. It is automatically done on whatever your piping fabric is. And so... You know, it's something that I think about now because sometimes I don't want my embroidery on that big head. It's a heavy piece of denim. It doesn't have the same flexibility as the microfiber. It's just, it's thicker. It's, uh, sometimes it just feels a little like clunky. Um, and I didn't want the embroidery on denim for this bag. Uh, I mean, I, I, I did want, like I was saying, I wanted a whole sort of monochromatic thing and I wanted, I knew that this gray, I, I knew it was a good chance and it did happen that this gray would pick up, the gray microfiber would pick up this touches of darker gray that are in the pattern. And so it works really well. Uh, I think even though I do like the denim trim and I have used it on a couple of custom bags and sometimes it works beautifully, um, gives you like a soft black. So I do think... I do think denim is probably a better choice if you wanted black, some kind of black trim. I think denim was probably a better choice than the black microfiber, just for my eye, aesthetically. I mean, black's a good neutral. It's always going to look good. But for me, um, I think that the black of the softer black of the denim um, trim probably goes better with the softness of the black elements that are in the pattern. Um, but again, I didn't, I didn't want to risk it and I did, still looks a little heavy for me, the denim, and I didn't want this embroidery on denim. Let's try to turn this inside out, uh, to show my embroidery, which is just a, uh, a template I've used before, a drawing of Duke. And I do have it on something else that's coming. I don't know when I'll see it and I'm not in any rush. I don't. Uh, so no, you know, I don't care if I don't get it right away. I'm okay to wait. Like I, I've said in other videos, I just want to know that it's being worked on. Um, but I did alter this template a little bit so that the dates aren't in it. There's no, it's only the drawing now. So I, I'm, I'm curious to, uh, to see how that works. I was so pleased to know I could even use a drawing. You know, the first time I loaded this up, I kind of felt like I was doing something forbidden. Like, let me see if I can, you know, cheat the system and I can put a drawing in there. It doesn't have to be just letters <laughs> and numbers. Um, and, you know, there was no problem. So that's kind of fun for someone if you draw, you know, um, that's kind of a fun option. I don't remember what thread color this is because it's looking kind of lavender and I don't remember choosing lavender not that I have a problem with that at all I did choose lavender on my very first custom bag and the thread didn't look lavender I don't know if it was just a mistake and they used the wrong color thread and I just didn't question it I thought I had picked like a warm ivory here um, I'm not sure what it is but whatever it is it's looking fine <laughs> very pleased with it and this has a nice soft feel this piece of microfiber as opposed to like a heavier piece of denim on my bags that have the denim trim and the embroideries on that denim it's just very like I said very thick feeling so this is kind of a nice way to see the pattern this is all the same features as a regular Vera tote you know as far as pocket configuration the six slip pockets inside and that hidden slip pocket up top and the front slip pocket with a zipper pocket on it, on it. But you can maybe see some of the fab, uh, some of the costumes a little bit better without the quilting. I don't know. You see that bulldog in, in, in a costume? <laughs> Looks like wings or something on that bulldog. I really do like the sushi 
costume there because I feel like that is something you see people sushi costumes for dogs uh, and hot dog costumes <laughs> do like a, a candy corn there as well on the collie so let me see these are cute to compare um, here this is St. Bernard puppy and the puppy in the cup and a, what looks like a retriever there with a bone on its nose so those become, um, see if I can find that St. Bernard puppy. It's funny, you don't get everything everywhere. It's on the outside now. I have to turn the bag right, right side out. Oh no, here he's on the bottom. There they are on the bottom. I can use them here. So you can see the St. Bernard puppy is now a chef. And the puppy in the cup almost looks like it's got a clown nose and a clown hat and the retriever, golden retriever, it has the lion's mane. So I won't go over everything, but it is cute to sit and sort of look with at, look at what they've done. And I, I really do like the poodle. I mean, I am not a poodle person. Um, I think that, you know, the, the haircut, that sort of breed standard uh, haircut for the standard poodle is just ridiculous but I do think I have said this in videos about best in show I think the poodle is one of the greatest elements in this I think it's so nicely done with all those different grays it just really is nicely rendered and so it creates a nice element here and um, it's up here it's an, I feel like I, I like that placement of it up top there and so here it is with a skeleton costume, which I thought was fun. That's a perfect dog to put that costume on because you really can get a feel for the costume there. You see the skeleton because of the body position of the poodle. So I was happy to get that. And also, <laughs> I was not crazy about... Uh, I, I I know this for a while, I don't know if it still is, but for a while it was a trend on like Instagram and social media, this dog shaming stuff, with the dogs with the signs, and I, I, I never was a fan of that. I, I just don't like that. I don't think it's funny at all. Um, and this one here said like, I ate mom's socks again. Um, and, and that I, I was not crazy about that element, but here, I do like that they changed the sign to say trick or treat. I do like that they've done that. And so when I when I saw that I had that dog up top and the panel that falls above the front pocket, I kind of liked it because it sort of is like announcing to everybody, well, that this is a Halloween bag. You know, you see that trick or treat makes sense in the context of why the dog would be wearing a sign as opposed to. You know, I ate mom's socks. Poor thing. <laughs> Who shames your dog? You don't shame your dog. Right there. Up top. It's funny now, the light meter there is sort of kicked in a little bit. But the light meter is not blowing it out right now, you know, for some strange reason. <laughs> it's cooperating. And it looks a little bit more accurate, the background tone here. It's a little bit more accurate. I'd say in person, though, it even looks a little bit warmer, the gray, than it's looking on the screen. So I was pleased with it. Um, I kind of wish they would make accessories. You know, it just would be nice to have a few small things like a, a wallet or a Carson cell phone crossbody or something small, or maybe a small uh, cosmetic pouch or something so that you could mix and match patterns. But, um, very pleased with it. Really just so pleased. Again, here it is next to the original. Let's see if I can put this one in the light more. Yeah. Just so, so happy to have it. Very, very pleased with it. And again, with spooky cats. I will try to put some some of those links. Oh, <laughs> let me see. So 
So anyway. Um, anyway, that was it. Finally here. So glad that the stress of waiting is over. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching and hopefully see you next time on Vera Bradley Bag of the Day.